Hello and welcome to the Monday, May 1st, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One thing we always enjoy is if people send us malware and Xavier looked at one sample on Friday. It used a pretty sort of interesting obfuscation technique which led to only five antivirus tools actually recognizing this particular sample as malicious even though it was well just another word macro. So first little trick that this malware plays is that it doesn't actually start automatically. The user has to first start the macro. This uh, removes uh, one common signature that's being used and this is the auto open function. Secondly, the malware then downloads additional code and that's uh, again kind of common, but it does so iteratively. So each download does give it another snippet of code. Essentially it checks just what works. That code itself is heavily obfuscated and then XORed with a key that was downloaded in the initial malware. So without the auto open function and no recognizable executable being transmitted across the network, that apparently does cause problems for many antivirus products in this particular case. However, no need to be too concerned about this particular sample because in the end it actually ends up downloading fairly commodity malware that is widely recognized. We have seen this before where attackers go through quite a few hoops and use fairly sophisticated exploits initially but then end up downloading commodity malware that doesn't really work if you have any kind of reasonable antivirus installed. However, I wouldn't totally discard this sample. Another thing that often happens if the first sample that's being downloaded is being caught by antivirus, you may actually see the downloader reach out to additional URLs and then download additional malware until it finds a sample that does not get recognized by your antivirus. Of course, one solution against this cat and mouse game with signatures is whitelisting. Microsoft has some options for this in recent versions of Windows. Apple also embraced it in OS X in that a user actually can't simply start software in its default configuration that is not properly signed with a developer certificate. However, it has happened and has happened again that malware actually ends up being signed with a valid developer certificate. Developer certificates for Apple are pretty easy to get. Essentially, all it takes is $100 and you will be handed out a certificate and in the past Apple has been somewhat slow in revoking the certificates once they turned out to be used for malicious purposes. The most recent case of malware like this uh, was discovered by Checkpoint. They called it OSX Doc and essentially it's a pretty simple email. It's written in German apparently targeting users in Germany or in Europe but Checkpoint Checkpoint only showed the German version of the particular email and it claimed to come from the Swiss tax authorities. Now in this particular case the malware is attached as a zip file. The user has to open it and run the malware but will not receive a warning because this malware has been signed with a developer certificate. The malware then installs itself and adds itself to the login items meaning that it's being started whenever the user logs in and it does implement an SSL proxy which will then intercept HTTPS communication from Safari and other software that honors OS X's proxy settings. Regardless, the malware, probably quick lesson learned here, check your proxy settings and make sure that malware didn't change them. In this case, it's just a little proxy that's uh, listening on the loopback interface. So if you remove the proxy, then you just can't go to any websites, but uh, also have seen proxy settings being changed to then point to other external systems.
And OVH, a low-cost provider of dedicated servers and other hosting solutions, apparently had some misconfigured servers with dual network cards where the second network card could be used to act as a rogue DHCP server and in effect play a man in the middle on other servers in the data center. Of course, if you are going with a low cost provider like OVH, you usually do not expect a cutting edge security or cutting edge support for that matter, but really just a cheap, simple box to play with. In general, when you do that, you should always consider all traffic coming from the outside as hostile and having, for example, misconfigured switches or other misconfigured systems in environments like this is certainly not not unheard of. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.